<sighs> yes. So, now that you've experienced the end of Skywalker, this one I save towards the end because it kind of goes from before and throughout the entire series. But it's not the end end. This is Star Wars The Forces of Destiny. And I am the geek protagonist. The geek protagonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Geek, geek, geek. That's right. This one's not going to be long. I know I say that a lot, but this one is definitely not because it's not a long series. These episodes aren't. This is more of my overview of uh, the entire thing. So, uh, yes. Forces of Destiny. There is a little, like, two minute, three minute ep mini episodes. Uh, very female focused, uh, very kids focused across all the trilogies. Now, I can say for the, uh, the animation, uh, there was, like, a lot of androgyny going on which i'm kind of getting tired of that i'm like let a female look like a female let a male look like a male so the animation wasn't terrible though like i know some people were really ragged on it i'm like yeah, some of it worked for what it was supposed to do but like the anakin one i he looked like a child i i didn't know what was going on i couldn't tell what he was but they gotta really stop with the androgynous thing make a character what they are male female whatever if they if that's what they are and, but I do also understand, and I wrap my head around the fact that this series is made, as they have said, for girls, uh, 7 to 12. I get that. But I think a big complaint with this series is also, too, there's no other Star, con uh, excuse me, Star Wars content around. Like, this is the main content right now, and people are like, well, no. I should have more Star Wars content with Disney's promises and everything. I know, no, there's a certain pandemic -y thing going on, but still, we should have more. So, this is going to be a laser focus for a lot of Star Wars fans. Like, well, this is all we're getting. What's up? Kind of thing. And it does feel like they keep making these one-offs instead of just giving us complete Star Wars content. So, what's happening is just that you're hearing people be very hyper-vocal and... I do think the representation is cool in the sense of covering all the boards. But sometimes it does feel like they're kind of pushing fans away uh, to do this. Not so much. But I, I think that if you're going to do it, be multifaceted. There should be stuff for kids. There should be stuff for old Star Wars fans. Stuff for new Star Wars fans. Uh, stuff that tries to appease all. But yeah, I... You should have something gear focused, but if you can try to at least keep most of the bases covered, at least two of the bases covered at any given time, you should be all right. Because there are going to be Star Wars fans who are, are not going to like any of the stuff unless it's prequel stuff or it's more harking back to prequel stuff. There's not going to be people who only like the original trilogy stuff. There's going to be people who, who really just want more of the Disney stuff. So you got to kind of have a balance, but Star Wars as itself is a franchise and you need to make it as a franchise to do that. But, but back on Tass, I can say that if I didn't do this uh, video series, it, it probably would have been a very long time if ever if I remembered to even watch this series. Um, just because they're so small, they're very micro, the little bite sizes, they're, they weren't all bad though, but it's just one of those things where it's kind of like, eh, okay. But because of this, I definitely went out of my way to watch it. Um, I think if the, I can say after watching this, if the content was a little bit more rounded, I think it would have been received a little better by a lot of fans. Um, being that the content, believing that the content wasn't as rounded as it should have been or could have been, then I think that's why you're catching some of the heat. As I was saying... Yeah, they, if they could be a little bit more rounded about the content that they're releasing, I think as a whole, it would have been better received by most Star Wars fans. But it did work for what it was, and it wasn't terrible. Uh, the content did feel a little exclusionatory off of the... There we go. Off of this, the sheer fact of how it was geared towards one specific set, subsect of fans. The animation 
was kind of super hyper simple. Some people would even call it trash. It worked, but it's kind of that blocky animation where it's like, but then there's times like the one where I seen where Leia and Han and, and, uh, and everything that seemed to be okay. So it, it's, it, it actually works for what it is. I think, I don't think the animation was terrible. I think sometimes the animation limited to how good some of the segments could have been. Um, the physics were pretty much non-existent. Like if it was ever kind of thing. So basically it's like girl power. Yay. Okay, cool. Whatever. Fine. You want to show off some of these characters? That's great. Uh, you want to show people off from rebels, Star Wars, give them a little bit more shine. Cool. But when Ray catches BB eight, like nothing in BB eight is easily 40 pounds. That was a little funky. Um, I could say it's not, it's not super good. It's, but it's not awful. You know what it feels like? I know what it feels like. It feels like those, uh, those shows where like we used to watch with, uh, Cartoon Network on the cartoon cartoons and they would have these little quick little bites between the cartoon shows. It felt like that. Like they were there to give you a nice quick story somewhere better than others. And then it kind of just went, all right, next thing. Like the one about the Fred and Ascot and stuff. That was funny. But definitely if you are a female and you're around like 7 and up to about 12, that's cool. I did think uh, Lupita Nyong's character, uh, being the narrator, that actually was that actually added a lot to it. Um, I think her name was like Nas Kanata. Nas Kanata, I think her name was. But yeah, she definitely added quite a bit um, to the thing. It just gave it, lev like it just gave it, I don't know. It just gave it something that the show I think would have been worse off if she wasn't a part of it. It, it actually helped. Do gotta give it to it. It was a little fast paced. Uh, sometimes it's kind of the witty jokes like, oh, it's this or oh, it's that. So I had a couple of violent moments, but nothing like over the top like the previous stuff. You know, enough of the stormtroopers things that you wouldn't really care about anyway. This did, however, this is also not for new fans who may have only seen... Let's say someone's only seen the original trilogy. They're kind of working their way into the new ones. Well, this kind of felt more like um, just run the plot. It's like, did you see Star Wars? No? Well, forget you kind of thing. So this was definitely a, a fan-focused thing, even though it was a certain section of the fan base. Uh, Ray's story with the sandworms, I actually thought that was awesome. It not only showed that she was a survivor... It but also shows her compassion and the type of person that she is. When does it take place? Uh, I guess there was a little adventure we missed in between before she ran into Fen with uh, BB-8. Asking questions, don't you dare. <laughs> Alea's stories were strong too. Uh, even the one with the Ewoks because there is something I actually forgot about the Ewoks. Um, the Ewoks will eat you. Dead. <laughs> If they don't like you, the cute teddy bear things will actually eat you. And I kind of forgot about that, even while watching the Ewoks. It just, while I was making my notes, for some reason, that didn't stick with me. But I want you to think about that. These cute bears that everyone's like, I can't stand them, I hate them. They know that you are sentient. They can communicate with you. They can communicate with a stormtrooper. Which possibly means that when they were playing with the stormtrooper helmets, and you noticed there wasn't that many stormtroopers in Star Wars, they might have eaten some of them. I want you to think about that. That's a couple action heavy episodes. Nothing too crazy. Uh, one had Ahsoka. That was a alright fight. The animation I said limited, but it worked for what the animation was. But it did at the same time kind of limit it. Uh, Sabine's one, same thing. Like I was like, oh, it's cool to see Sabine do something. Still had that limit thing. And the same as Jean. Uh, all of them were alright, but it did have that limited feel. Um, for but it worked. It, you know, each episode you got something a little different. If you wanted a little action, it gave you a little action. It, like it gave you a little a little taste of everything. Uh, but the animation, like I said, it had that robotic. It was a bit stiff. Um, a lot of the violence does turn to droids a lot, even more than the troopers. Uh, it does have them in there, but not as much as droids. It did add a little bit more to Ray. It definitely added a little bit more to the Gene. Um, 
and just the anthology as a whole for those characters. So I thought that was cool. Those characters deserve some love, of course. Uh, the These are very short. You kind of have to think a little harder to see when this happened. Um, it's a little simplistic. S small to large. These are done... The animation, like I said, I have, I got to admit, I have seen better animation from amateur YouTubers doing it by themselves. But it, it, it is what it is kind of thing. Feel though, this could be a decent introduction to a kid uh, who just wants to watch some Star Wars. But, you know, need a little gateway. Like, I, I would show my little niece uh, these. And I think she would like them. If she wanted to watch Star Wars, like, here's some of the girls that did some of the stuff. Like, yeah, like, I can't deny that there is some usefulness to this. Even though I know I'm cursing at a lot of hardcore Star Wars fans. But, yeah, I thought it is a good introduction. You got a kid, uh, especially a girl, like, hey, look, look at these, and then, you know, break them in. Uh, some of the things that stood out for me, uh, like I said, episode one with Ray, uh, the thing that eats junks, but it's, uh, it reminded me of Tremors, uh, but it, like I said, it does show Ray cares for it. And even though this thing tried to, you know, end him, uh, she still was able to feed it. And it does come into play later. Uh, you got the second episode, like all with the BB-8 running and Hot Pursuit fast. They, they just kind of just flowed. Uh, Leia, Wicked, and Stormtroopers, that, that stuff was hilarious. Uh, how she tries to help and they do the whole thing with food. Padawan Path um, is the thing with Ahsoka. You know, I always want some Ahsoka. Uh, running away from the droids, Ahsoka hits, you know, vehicle, water. It's like one thing leads to another, but basically it's like sometimes doing the greater good um, is better than doing just the thing. It was a decent episode. And there's like a, I can't remember, I think there's like eight or so. You literally fly through them so quick it is there. I, I would say give it a watch. Uh, they could have did more. I think what they did wasn't terrible. I get it for the age group. But there's a little more I think they could have did. So, you know what? This one, I want to get to the next thing. Um, this is how quick it is. Like, literally, you could watch these in probably the span of, like, a half hour or less. Um, but I'm going to give it a, a bacon. A, a good bacon. I see the potential for it. I see that it could be good for a kid, um, a girl specifically, who is trying to go into Star Wars. Um, I don't know why we have to keep making gender specific stories when they're trying to always take away. Um, I know a lot of females that like Star Wars and it had nothing to do with that. Like, I, I feel like when Kathleen Kennedy and his whole future female thing or forces female, like that needs to stop. You need to get back to just making good Star Wars stories. These work. They do work. They're not horrible. That's why I said bacon. But if you're looking for stuff like you had with Rebels or Clone Wars, even Resistance, you're really not going to get it here. And it does, I do see the fear of a lot of fans that it seems like the quality of the cartoons are going like this. Um, but I do know they said they're supposed to be coming out with another cartoon. So we're going to see where that goes. <clears throat> and the animation is supposed to be similar to like an updated Clone Wars from like season, season 7. But yeah. If you don't be so harsh on this one, <clears throat> if you sit down and you watch it, it's some nice little quick stories. Uh, some of them actually are, I have to say, in my personal opinion, are pretty good. Uh, they're not terrible, but then some of them kind of like, sure, I roll, sure. So, yeah, I say it's bacon, but, you know, it's even. Whew. Uh, Star Wars month is coming to a close. This has been an uh, experience, but I'll talk about that later. I have to do more. <laughs> but um, I think with these sets of movies and as such that this is the final time for this uh, outfit. And I'm going to go to something that's going to represent something else that I want to say as a message. So yeah, this is the Geek Protagonist. I want you to stay safe, stay healthy, stay real. And I will see you in the next one. Hey, thank you for visiting my channel. This is the Geek Protagonist. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, please, It'll really help me out in the channel if you actually share these videos, if you like what I'm doing. Um, please hit that bell notification. Hit it click, click. 
Uh, this way you won't miss any of my videos. Also, there's a thing on there that says personal and all. Hit the all. Uh, this way you'll get them every time for the notifications. I'm trying to, you know, grow, trying to do commentary about what's going on. Um, and I want to thank you again. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay real. This is the Geek Protagonist. I'm out and I'll see you.